I'm gonna tell my story. I'm not gonna be silent anymore. This is what happened to me on June 11, 2012. Four days after my 21st birthday, I was kidnapped, I was held hostage, I was beat, raped. It was a fucking real life horror movie. Early in the afternoon on June 11, 2012, I was told by my abusive ex-girlfriend Heather Franks Ferguson to move a recliner out of her room. The recliner was very wide, like, here's the recliner and here's the doorway, because a bed would not open the door all the way. I believe that she had that on purpose. Also, her room was so disgusting. The room I was held hostage and kidnapped in, the walls looked like they were literally moving. Cockroaches everywhere. Not an inch of bed. Anyway, so after I finally got the adrenaline to move this recliner out of the room, I put it in the backyard how she wanted, so I came back in all happy that I got it. The door was shut to the room, so I opened it and I was going to look around, and she jumped on me from behind the door. I landed face first onto the bed. She jumped on top of me. I felt the dog leash keep hitting me over and over and over. Navy blue dog leash. The clip finally busted me in the eyebrow, and I never realized a motherfucking eyebrow could bleed so much. Sorry, I'm getting emotional. Anyway, so after that, I was terrified. I couldn't move. And that was the first moment I realized that it was abusive. That's how fucking slow I am. Anyway. So, after that... She began raping. And, I mean, I just took a dog leash to the back. So my fucking back was hurting. She scratched my back while she was doing it. Raping me, I should say. Scratching the fuck out of my back. And it was bleeding. Bruised, bleeding. I had blood coming out of my eyebrow. I was wearing a yellow Mario and Yoshi shirt that my grandmother, may she rest in peace, Santina Olson, got me. It was bright yellow, Mario and Yoshi, and some Japanese letters. Anyway, after she was finally done, I managed to somehow get up, and I was going to go to the bathroom. She turns to me, puts her hand up above the door to block me in. She goes, are you suicidal? I didn't know what the fuck to say, so I just said yes. Didn't know how to say anything else. I was terrified. So instantly, she pushes me back down on the bed, and her hands are around my neck. She's squeezing. Squeezing! She says, you should let me kill you. i never seen so much evil in someone's eyes. Ever. So after that... I looked up, I saw her piling boxes in front of the door, so I couldn't escape. After that, she held a knife to my neck. Call your parents right now. You tell them that you're moving out. Now. So with the knife to my neck, I called. My dad was shocked, and I just did what she said. I didn't want to get my throat cut. I honestly didn't think I was going to survive that night. I honestly thought I was going to die. For real. Anyway, so exactly one week later, on June 18th, 2012, I... Heather had to go to a doctor's appointment at the Visalia Family Healthcare Network across from the transit center. So, I told her, hey, go sign in. We got off Route 9 bus, and I said, I'm going to use the bathroom. I got to pee. So I called my mom. My mom came down there, and my mom ended up playing like a tug of war against Heather with me, and I won. My mom won. I couldn't speak normal. I was just making noise. 
happening and hugging when Heather tried to pull me back from my mom. I got my voice back for a second and I said, Heather Franks, I'm tired of you beating me. I'm tired of you cheating on me. It's over. We're done. And I took off with my mom and I never looked back. So I survived my real life horror movie and...